Welcome to Sewing Machine Basics presented by the Mount Royal University Library Maker Studio. In this video, you will learn some basic sewing skills using a domestic sewing machine, which is available in the Maker Studio. For more project ideas, resources, and information, you can go to the Maker Studio website, which is found on the Mount Royal University Library website under Spaces. In this video, we will go over the main parts of a sewing machine, winding a bobbin, threading the upper thread, sewing a stitch, changing the needle, and how to change the presser foot. The sewing machine model presented in this video is not the same model available in the Maker Studio, but it is very similar. Most sewing machines have the same parts and functions. If you are using a sewing machine outside of the Maker Studio, please be sure to follow your user manual's instructions. All right, let's get started with the parts of the sewing machine. Here is the on switch. And in the front, you can see the different kinds of stitches that you can use. Uh, the dial here has numbers that correspond to the numbers on the front. Some machines are digital. This first dial is the stitch length dial, and then we have the stitch width dial, and then the tension dial. You shouldn't need to worry about that one. It should be on four. We also have the reverse stitch button. And here you can see we have the foot, the feed dogs, the bobbin, the needle, and the presser foot lever. Okay, let's get started winding the bobbin. So you have to take the lid off and you need to make sure that the bobbin is the right size. Some machines have smaller bobbins and some have larger ones. So you place the bobbin on the bobbin winding rod and then you need to put uh, your thread on this rod and you need to pull it out with this model of machine. There are instructions on the top of the machine. You have to follow the dotted lines for winding the bobbin. So just like the diagram says in number one, there we go. And then you need to put the thread through the hole in the top of the bobbin so that when it starts spinning, uh, the thread won't just will be attached to the bobbin and it'll be tight. So now you need to push the bobbin over and now the machine's ready to thread it. And to do that, you have to push on the pedal. And then the bobbin starts spinning. It won't stop by itself with this model, so you'll have to keep an eye on it and stop when it gets too full. When it's done, Push it back to the previous position and cut the thread. Now, most machines come with instructions on how to load the bobbin. So with this one, you drop it in and you need to make sure that the bobbin is going to be spinning counterclockwise. Once you have it in, you take your thread and follow along the path and there's a little blade that'll cut your thread for you and then you put the lid back on. We're going to be threading the upper thread. You can follow the directions of the solid line. So number one is up here just like the bobbin. Then we come down to number two, number three, and we have to go around the silver arm which goes up and down, that's number four. Number five is just coming down here. Now number six is very important. There's this little bar here and you need to make sure that the thread is around the bar. Okay, at this point we can actually cut the thread. Some machines have self-threaders. This one 
is broken, so we're going to thread it by hand. You need to make sure that the thread goes through the needle front to back. All right, and there we are. Your sewing machine is ready to go. Let's get started sewing a stitch. So you want to make sure that you look at the numbers that are here so you know how far your edge is from where your stitch is going to be. Make sure the bulk of your fabric is on the left side or away from the machine. This is the presser foot lever. Just push it down and the presser foot comes down and holds down your fabric. Push on the pedal and you start sewing your stitch. The harder you press, the faster you'll go. If you'd like to do a reverse stitch, you can press the reverse stitch button and you'll sew backwards. It's good for locking your stitch. So over here, we're going to change our stitch from a straight stitch to number three, which is the zigzag stitch. Push on your lever, and the machine starts to sew your zigzag stitch. Lift up the presser foot lever again. Now the needle is in the fabric. That's not what we want. It'll break the needle if we pull. So what we need to do is actually turn this dial towards us. It's important to remember you need to only turn it towards you so your machine doesn't run backwards. When you get the needle in a position that it's out of the fabric, pull your fabric slightly and cut the thread, both threads, with scissors. And here you can see the different stitches. If your needle bends or breaks, you're going to need to change it. So you should have a small flathead screwdriver like this that comes with your machine and you should be able to loosen this little screw and pull your needle right out, the broken needle. Dispose of it safely and then get your new needle. Now needles have a flat side, you can see this one has a flat side and it needs to be against the machine, the flat side needs to be against it. So we're just going to slide the new needle back up and it, can't, it can only go as high up as the machine will let it, so push it up as far as it can go and then tighten the screw with your hand and then further tighten it with the screwdriver. To remove the foot, push the back lever and the foot comes off, but now we need to take off the rest of it. We'll use that screwdriver again on this screw here and turn it counterclockwise and it falls off. Then to put it back on or a different foot like a zipper foot, something for another function, slide it over the post and tighten that screw again with the screwdriver. Make sure it's on there really well. And now attach the foot. There's a little bar here and it goes into this little dip. So just line those up and try to slide the bar into the dip. I hope you've enjoyed this video. For more resources, you can go to the Maker Studio website found on the MRU Library website under Spaces. If you have further questions, you can contact the Maker Studio at makerstudio at mtroyal.ca or you can email the Maker Studio staff.